they had come to Roanoke, Virginia, and come 1.5 up the Trail Mountain Pass, where I had spent the winter freezing and starving. They came up the old trail. So it was them. So the Kennedys all knew. It's been a running joke how this country has treated me. If I was guilty of a crime, it was being born. And this benefited them because um, if this is ever told, the treaties, my own uncle and Elizabeth, uh, signed illegal treaties allowing the United States to put their bases, military bases, on uh, everything British. And, of course, the United States was doing it for the good. This is always it. So they're going to make my father out to be bad. And they did it with a lie. Everything was a lie. This woman was a spy who married a double, and then they kidnapped me and gave me another name, and they have tortured me just like they did Anastasia, too. Anna's my cousin. I end up up here in Roanoke, Virginia, in October of, 80, of um, 86, living on the Appalachian. I'm shut down, no job, no nothing. I was born the wealthiest woman in the world when I was born. And guess who's lived off of my money in hell? Elizabeth. Guess who everybody loves? Elizabeth. She even was paid in um, 07 by the state of Virginia to come here, to come to Virginia. And she came close to Roanoke while I'm living on the Appalachian Trail starving. And that by that time, that was April the 6th, uh, 16th? Yeah, of 07. When the shootings happened at Virginia Tech. Now, I've been talking about the shootings, and and um, that's me and my son. That's Mark. I don't know if you can see it, and Scott, uh, who they tortured, too, by the way. My sons are heirs. And no, uh, anyway, I don't want to get into anything else right at the moment. This is the old keeps. This is my mom, Claudia Roots. So my dad was married to her. She's my mom, and this whole thing was a lie to take out a very beautiful man and replace him with this SOB and Elizabeth and her crew that have stole Great Britain blind and me too and stood by while it happened. But Virginia could pay her to come here. Okay, I I was looking up, and this is one of the patterns. I started off with this because it's true. These are mind control. Now then, I was went back and was looking at um, um, Tsar Nicholas, who was Anastasia's father, and they have written nothing but lies about him. He was a very decent man, and so was Alexandra. It's what um, it, it's unreal to read it how they tried to make him out to be. The bad guy, it's hard to read, especially when I know what they've lied and done to me. And this press will not tell it. And an FBI man, after I got the letter in June the 23rd, which, by the way, is my dad's birthday, but it was then obviously in 79 from U.S. Attorney Harper. The FBI was the one that uh, had him send it. It was ongoing investigation, national security involved. So the FBI, there's been two of them that specifically said things to me. The one uh, when I was in the FBI office, and it had to be the winter of 82, uh, said to me, and he faked yawning, you know what they do with what you tell them? And this is way back then when I wasn't telling them all this. He said, you bored them. And it won't be until they find out how it affects them that they care. So later I became a candidate to replace Larry MacDonald, a doctor I'd written about one of them, who was uh, U.S. Congress, uh, House of Representatives. The plane went down. I've told that in other tapes. Now then, Larry Flint furnished me a car, leased it for a year, and I have not spoken with him since I, will, I don't believe since I was out there in 83, his home twice, not October of 83, he was helping me in the campaign. So 
So I ended up pumping gas, having a car again. He furnished the car for a year. I was pumping gas in Grottoes, Virginia, near Roanoke, not too far from Roanoke here, in Charlottesville, where Anastasia was. Uh, an FBI retired, and I remembered after then meeting him in 62 at Brown Engineering. My husband and he were friends. I, he was not supposed to be an FBI agent. He was supposed to be working for Brown Engineering like my husband was. Uh, that's Huntsville, the space industry. Here I see him. His last name is Noe, N-O-E. At least that's the name he used. And he was nice to me. He wasn't being mean. He told me, he came in quite often, and I pumped gas. And he told me, he said, uh, they've made it so ludicrous. He was talking about the FBI that when you tell it, people know you're telling the truth, that it gives them a chance to help you or walk away, and they walk. And I've just read the books here of uh, the defamation of character, the Tsar Nicholas and his whole family, and Anastasia was brought here. And by the way, I was driving the Hustler car furnished by Larry Flint. Uh, it's a timeline in all this, and I'm coming through Charlottesville, just learning of my kidnapping and who my relatives are. And she's killed by the uh, Blue Ridge Mental Health. Yes, she was. And an attorney, this was done against her husband. He was a professor in Manhattan. Um, so this was done against his wishes. He even drove his car trying to get her out of the, the mental ward where they had, they're using the mental health. They're using it with the mind control victims, and they're calling them mentally ill. And I'd like to ask everybody to stop and ask, why do these doctors, uh, psychologists, any of them, why do they not speak up and say that this is programming? If they don't know the difference, and they do, something's wrong with them, and their medical license should, should be snatched. To misdiagnose someone who's under mind control it has nothing to do with mental illness. And I'm going to go ahead and say this for one that's been done that way, and that's the Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes. Now then, Anastasia was locked up and killed, and I came through there and heard it on the radio. The car was furnished by Flint. I never knew I was going to end up back here, and I was just finding out about being who my relatives are. And, of course, Zar Nicholas and his family are the same that they are to Elizabeth. Oh, I have read on what happened to um, Anastasia, and it's shocking. I'm talking about here in Charlottesville. Well, it's not shocking because I know how they've done me. But when I came through there, let me say this because it gets into the patterns. I'm driving a Hustler car. Larry Flint's wife is um, Althea Flint, and she was she died in a pool, a uh, uh, bathtub, heart-shaped bathtub. Uh, how about mind control there? His, by the way, Larry Flint's first wife was named Peggy. So I'm driving through uh, Charlottesville, and Anastasia is murdered using the mental health system, Blue Ridge. She lives in Scottsville. They have a farm outside Charlottesville. And my son's name Scott Preston. Preston was the name of the twin to Peggy, and God knows I wish I'd never named him that, my son that. But anyway, this attorney, Preston, was hired to put Anastasia away, even over her husband's objection, and he was a professor at the University of Charlottesville. So this is the um, hell that's gone on with everybody knowing it. And by the way, oh. Uh, I, I was put on the street, no place to live, like a bag lady, begging, begging, everything in the book done to me. And I ended up in uh, Charlottesville at the Salvation Army. It was Christmas. And uh, I was sitting on the back steps, and a man came up to me, a young man. It turned out that he really was uh, the young man who stayed and helped on the farm, helped Anastasia and her husband, Manahan all those years, and he sat there and talked to me. He handed me 